We will now present two electrocardiograms to you. These ECG are from two patients who arrived at your clinic simultaneously, both experiencing chest pain. Both patients are 50 years old, and you'll need to make a decision regarding their care. While both patients should be referred to the hospital, one of them will require immediate attention and prioritized referral. We will display the ECG of these two patients for you to determine which one should be given priority in treatment and why. Here is the first electrocardiographic tracing. I suggest pausing the video to carefully analyze the ECG. Now let's move on to the second tracing, which represents the second patient with the same chest pain symptoms, also 50 years of age. Again, I suggest pausing the video to carefully analyze the ECG. Returning to the first tracing for discussion, we can observe a sinus rhythm with no alterations in the QRS complex axis and the QRS complex itself. Upon examining the ST segment, we can see an elevation of the ST segment in nearly all leads, most prominently in D1, D2, D3, a VF, and from V3 to V6. Additionally, we can observe a depression of the ST segment in a VR, associated with an elevation of the PR segment in a VR and a depression of the PR segment, particularly in the lateral wall from V4 to V6. This case is highly consistent with what? An acute pericarditis presentation, as there is elevation of the ST segment in almost all the walls, except for a VR, where we have a depression. Associated, there is a depression of the PR segment, most visible from V4 to V6, combined with an elevation of the PR interval in a VR. This ECG is strongly suggestive of acute pericarditis. Analyzing the next electrocardiographic tracing, we also observe a sinus rhythm, however, there is a noticeable change. The electrical axis seems to display a borderline leftward deviation, accompanied by an elevation of the ST segment. However, this time we don't see the elevation of the ST segment in all the walls. It is primarily visible in the anterolateral wall, V1 to V3, D1, and a VL. Along with this, when we have localized elevation in a specific wall, in this case, the anterolateral wall, we usually see depression in the opposite wall as if it were a mirror image when it results from ischemia, rather than early repolarization or another cause. What can we observe in the inferior wall? We see an elevation in the anterolateral wall and a depression in the inferior wall. Thus, this ECG strongly suggests an acute myocardial infarction. We can already notice from V1 to V3 that there is a reduction in the R wave amplitude, which means the QRS complex is not progressing as much, likely due to the onset of wall necrosis. The main diagnosis is an anterior acute myocardial infarction with a less significant lateral component. This patient should be prioritized for referral to the emergency department and immediate care. Thank you for taking the time to learn with us today. Please share this video with your colleagues, subscribe to our channel, and give us a positive evaluation. We hope to see you soon in our next video.